So, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Bruno Ota. I have worked at CERN from 1967 to 2004. And uh, for the time being, I am writing a book on the application of the Wolfram language to particle accelerators. And uh, this talk is, a matter of fact, a part of a chapter which is uh, related to civil engineering at CERN. Uh, what you have to realize is that civil engineering is the first position in the, in the budget of an accelerator. It is extremely expensive and the way you prepare it, do it, is uh, of course of great importance. That said, I'm not a civil engineer. What my motivation was here to investigate uh, the data set of, uh, of the Wolfram language and to apply it to define, let's say, the geometry of the largest tunnel in the world, which is uh, the LEP LHC tunnel. So why did I call it LEP LHC? It's just because the tunnel has been built for two machines. Uh, the first one was an electron positron collider, which was called LEP, and which is now dismantled. And the second is the, uh, the Hadron Collider, which, which is running now. So let me go to a, an outline of, of the talk. Uh, I, I shall explain you the, the detail, let's say the, the, the project itself. Uh, and I shall go to the geographic aspect of it by describing a model of the Earth. And then I shall go to the geometric aspect, which is the, the LHC circle itself. And then I shall make a few comments on uh, the 3D representation of, of that. I'm, I must tell you also that I have been introduced to this technology by <coughs> Jose Martin Garcia, who revealed me all the secrets of uh, the a GPS system. And that was absolutely fascinating. So what was the historical context of that? Uh, in the 70s, there was a first set of experiments on a machine called the SPS, Super Proton Synchrotron, uh, that we shall talk about also uh, in that talk. But that machine had a uh, was converted rather boldly into a proton-antiproton -proton collider. Uh, how it, that was made, I shall not tell you unless you ask me at the end of the talk, uh, because the technology of uh, antiprotons is rather special. Nevertheless, that, that worked. And the net result is that the special particles the field particles which are responsible of the electroweak interaction were discovered there. And these particles are namely the W plus, the W minus, and the Z zero, which are in the range of the 100 GeV mass. At the same time, Fermilab, which is for some of you maybe well known, because it's just between uh, Champagne and uh, Chicago. Uh, there was a big project being prepared, uh, which was a so-called Tevatron, so a one TeV, I mean, one billion electron volt accelerator, which was being converted after the success of the PP bar at CERN, uh, Fermilab follow the same way, but having a PP bar collision at two TeV, so about 10 times higher. 
so the directorate at CERN uh, defined a strategy uh, to meet the, 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 comp the world competition and they decided to build the largest ring between Jura and Swiss border. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, with the places, it's first near Geneva in Switzerland. And Geneva is along the, the Lake Geneva and north of it, the, the Arc of Jura Mountains. And uh, it is where most of the, of the CERN lab is located now. <clears throat> but we, you, you will see it in a, in a while. Uh, and the, in that big tunnel would be built uh, the LEP collider that I talked to you before, which is a 200 GeV electron positron collider. And later on, the LHC, uh, let's say the LEP has finished his uh, is data handling in, uh, in the 90s, 95 roughly. And the LHC started roughly uh, 10 years later. It had few, it's a very difficult machine, especially because it is superconducting. And it had a few difficulties to run, but now it has reached a full regime. And as decovered, as most of you know, the, the Higgs boson. So to, when you receive such an instruction from the, from the directorate, uh, uh, you have to rethink your knowledge of the Earth because uh, the geometry of the, of the circle is uh, has to follow a realistic realistic model of the Earth. So the reference for the Earth is the um, the gravitation and an equipotential of the gravitation is given as an origin at the surface of ocean and seas. Of, you will tell me that there are waves, tides, and so on and so forth, but this, this is uh, average, I would say, uh, to give a stable origin to the system. Next, uh, if you adopt that sea level reference for the uh, gravitation, when you enter the Earth, uh, the gravitation field changes with uh, the position. And that has been measured very precisely by satellites. And now we have a, a, a model of the Earth, which is called the geoid. However, this geoid has a very irregular shape. And uh, if you want to make calculations, you need to fit some surface to the geoid. And the fit is, is done with a, an ellipsoid. And there are even several ellipsoids, but uh, I shall not complicate the, the, pro, the purpose. And, and, and just, you, you can imagine that there is only one. Uh, nevertheless, on that ellipsoid, there is still uh, two interpretation, uh, because when you work on aligning an object on the earth, uh, let's say kind of uh, intuition is that uh, the, the vertical should go to the center of the earth. This is wrong. The vertical does not go to the center of the earth because the earth is an ellipsoid here. And it arrives at a point which I which can see on the on the screen with the angle phi, which describes some 
latitude. And you have a second system, which is in magenta, which is a Cartesian system. So just to summarize, you have to work both with a geodetic system and with a Cartesian system. And all we, I shall describe <coughs> now will, uh, will be a kind of, uh, of balance between the two systems. Uh, to, let's say for the Cartesian system, it is rather easy to, um, to, to see. You have the origin for the latitudes is the equator and the origin for the longitudes is the Greenwich Meridian uh, and it is all that we shall use in the, few, in, in the next. So now uh, I come to the exploitation of the database of the, of, uh, the, the Wolfram language. And especially, let's say that database is really huge and it will be still more in the, in the future. And you, how to enter the database? That is the first question, which is not obvious to answer. Uh, you want to access the data of a particle accelerator. And the database is can be seen as a set of sets. And a set has the name entity. And uh, the, the elements of the entity are the properties of the entity. So what I did here is to use, not only a, an entity would be for a given particle accelerator, but when you have to choose in among several accelerators, and there are many on, uh, in the years, uh, it is, instead of entity, it is entity list. And you can see the particle accelerators which are registered on the database. And one of them is the, I think you can see the marker here, is a large hadron collider. And when I click on it, uh, you can't see it, unfortunately, but there is the detailed structure, the detailed syntax of that yellow frame uh, that you use here. You say the LHC is the entity particle accelerator large Hadron collider. And <coughs> so this is the name that you will use forever in, in, the, in the following work. So what are the elements or the properties of the Large Hadron Collider? You, you type P for properties, LHC, that was defined before, of properties between quotation marks and a capital letter for properties. And you can see that there is an abbreviation Accelerate the particles which are accelerated, uh, the center of mass energy types, coordinates, diameter, operation time, entity classes, uh, experiments. And what I'm interested in is the geometry uh, properties, namely the diameter and the geodetic properties, the position. So the diameter is given here, I call it uh, DLU, LHC of diameter. And I can see that it is 8.5 kilometers, which means a full circumference of 20, a little more than 27 kilometers. 27 kilometers, that will give you already another magnitude of the, of the, uh, of the circle you have, you, one has to build. Um, and you can see that there is the unit together with that. And that is conceptually a list of two elements, the numerical value and the unit. 
<coughs> so I keep only the numerical value here. And to locate the machine, I invoke the property position, which is here. And that position returns the geographic position of the machine, or let's say an approximation of that position. We shall see that it is, it has to be refined. And uh, that position, which is 46 degree latitude and six degree longitude can be represented on a kind of, uh, of map, a classical map or road map, if you like. And on that map, you can recognize the Lake of Geneva, the Lake Geneva in Europe, not in the uh, US, <laughs> uh, with Geneva just at the tip here on the, at the south. And as I told you at the very beginning, the, the CERN laboratory uh, extends from a part of the Swiss site towards the Jura, which is here. And that region here takes the name of a small city, which is called Jex. And the, this area is called the Pays de Jex in French, or the country of Jex, or the Jex country. But we, even the foreigners say Pays de Jex. And Ferney Voltaire, which is another city we, have to, we shall have to consider in a while, is here. And this is uh, the location, I would say, of the center of gravity of the first site of, of CERN. And this center of gravity is located in Switzerland. But uh, you can maybe see uh, the kind of sotus, which is the borderline. So now I come to the geometry. Uh, of course, the, the, you don't, do not decide just on a, on a map where you will build the machine. You have to find information about, let's say, uh, political aspects of, of the region because you cannot build such an instrument without asking permission to the, to the villagers, to the mayors, and so on and so forth. And that's a very long story. Uh, the second point is you have to take into account the geology. And uh, uh, the geology is very good for accelerators in, in the plain where, the, where it is flat, because it was the ground for a glacier and uh, the, the, the rock which, which was underneath the, the glacier is called moraine, is, excuse me. Hmm? No, it's not moraine, excuse me. I, I, I forgot, pardon me, I, I forgot uh, the name of the rock. It will, it will come back. But nevertheless, on the, on, the, uh, on the edges of the glacier, there is a moraine. And so this is the part near the Jura, and that is very, uh, let's say, delicate to manipulate uh, excavating instruments in, in such a region. So you have to take a kind of a compromise between the various geological aspects of, of the port. Nevertheless, assuming that all that studies have been made and decisions were taken, it was said that the north side of the diameter of the circle would be near a village called Eschenve, and this is a point A of the diameter. And you can find it with geoposition, which returns the coordinates of Eschenve. And the point B is near Ferney Voltaire that I mentioned a while ago, which is here. You can see that there are uh, six decimals there, between five and six. So th that gives you the, uh, an idea of the precision we require. 
uh, but these coordinates concern latitude and longitude. And as a matter of fact, you need also the elevation. So to go to the elevation, you have to go to the Cartesian geometry and uh, take into account what we call the geodetic normal. The geodetic normal is a vertical and it points, as you saw on the first slide, not in the center of the ellipsoid. And uh, to derive the Cartesian coordinates, we use a, an instruction which is geo to Cartesian. And I said here that the bottom, or let's say the surface of the machine is 100 meter below Earth level. But you see, as we are on one side and in a mountain and on the other side on the plain, that means that the ring will not be horizontal. That's a very first difficulty. And why is it so? Because uh, 100 meters is considered as a good compromise between uh, the, the depths of the machine, which should not rad radiate uh, to the Earth level, and uh, the proximity of the, of the geological plates, uh, which makes the digging of the tunnel uh, affordable. Uh, Knowing that, you can evaluate the distance between A and B, which is 8,500 8, uh, meters. But this is not exactly the diameter, the, the nominal diameter of the LHC. So you have to take an adjustment, which is uh, called a homosety. And in mathematics, I think it's scaling. Nevertheless, you do that geometrical operation and then you redefine the point B, which was minor B at the beginning, becomes big B at the, at the end, and you have the exact position of the, the end of the diameter near uh, the Swiss border. And you are sure that the distance between A and B is, uh, is a nominal one. Now the center is midway between the two, uh, that's trivial. And you come now to the 3D aspects, plane, axis, and tilt, which is a continuation of the, of the, of the previous uh, things. Uh, a third point, yes. To define the plane, the diameter is not sufficient. You need a third point. And the third point has been taken more or less arbitrary but there is a big experiment in that region which is called Atlas. Some of you may know. And we took a point near Atlas uh, as a, the third reference point. Uh, so this is the journey, the, uh, the coordinates given by geoposition. And it is converted into a 3D position here, exactly as the same as before. And by taking a suitable uh, cross product, we can find the normal to the plane defined the A, B, and C, and the angle between this, this axis and uh, and, the, and the horizontal gives a tilt of the plane, which has been evaluated to uh, one, one milliradian, excuse me, one, one degree about. So you see, it's all of that to say that uh, at some scale, uh, you have huge, or rather huge dimensions, which are measured in, in kilometers. And when you came to subtle quantities like the tilt, it's only one degree, but this only one degree is, is very important. The 
So now, uh, let me see. Yes, I want to show you how the LHC is defined in reality because it is not only an abstract circle. When you want to show it, you want to see where the experiments are located. And you want to give a relatively detailed map. So to do that, I measured on the circle which goes through the three points I've defined, A, B, and C, uh, eight points which correspond to the eight intersecting points of the LHC, where the two beams of, prot of protons collide. Uh, and the purpose is to, so you have, you need a rotation operator, which in, uh, this is a relatively new thing in uh, Mathematica, because the geometry aspect of Mathematica has been uh, fairly developed and you have access to, to the rotation by a rotation transform. And since I have eight points to distribute over two pi, I uh, rotate the angle of rotation is pi over four. Um, uh, that points have to be, to be uh, represented on the, on the, on the map. And the, uh, the, the representation is made by markers. So the plane which has been defined by kind of equation, Cartesian equation up to now, is converted into geographical uh, representations. So that's a 2D thing, which looks, we saw that the tilt was one degree. So uh, it's almost in the plane of the, of the, of the Pays de Gex here. And you can see now, I hope you can see, uh, the map of the region with the circle in blue and the, the eight experiments here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in a precise, precisely defined position. Uh, and for instance, it is in Atlas and CDS here, one and five, that the Higgs boson has been found. Uh, um, okay, now just to finish because time is going, I would like to show you a genuine 3D representation of the circle. Um, on that figure, uh, the, the LHC circle is shown in blue. The green circle is the SPS I took at the beginning and which is horizontal. So the blue circle is tilted by 1.6 degree uh, with respect to the green circle. And the SPS circle is the injector of the protons into the LHC. So how do you inject the protons? By a in, inside another tunnel, which is called uh, uh, the injection tunnel. And here I showed only one tunnel. Of course, you have to send two beams of protons. So one goes in this direction and you have to send another one in the other direction so the beams can collide. And uh, to go from the plane of the SPS to the plane of the LHC, uh, I choose to, to design a helix. So you see it will be a little like in a car park. You have several levels for the parkings and you go from one level to the other one by a, a ramp which, which follows a helix. So it is the same idea. Nevertheless, here, as the two planes are not parallel, 
a better comparison would be, for instance, for a space, uh, for two space orbits, where some uh, satellite has to jump from one orbit to the next. So that would be, a, I think, a problem which will be treated the same way. Uh, uh, I shall stop here because I'm just at, at 3, 3 p.m. So I'm happy to, to hear <coughs> your questions, if you have some. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them in the pathable chat. And I will read them to Bruno for him to answer. Yes. All right, Luigi says, thank you for your presentation, Bruno. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, well, it was hard to understand or a bit special? No, oh, it went well. It's okay? okay? Yes. You know more? Fine. So do we stop here? Yes, we can stop here. Aaron, okay. since you're the host, you can cancel the meeting. Close okay. it out for everybody. All righty. Okay, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you for, yes. Uh, can you tell me how I can join, rejoin the uh, Stephen Wolf from Stoke? Uh, yes, Bruno, I'll email you. Okay, so okay. I'll let you close the session. Yep, perfect. Thank you all. Bye, Bruno. Mm -hmm.